Shenanjia is rich in mountains and valleys. On the steep cliffs and deep in the valleys, many karst caves can be seen. They seem to be totally silent. Only by going deep into them can one sense their amazing vitality. In the pitch dark cave, a flashlight is used to see these fist sized objects on the wall. The Himalayan swiftlet got its Chinese name from its short golden beak and golden strings in the wings. It sets up its home on the cave wall, commonly known as the bird's nest. It also uses saliva as a glue to fix the nesting materials on the rock wall. However, the Himalayan swiftlet's nest is mainly built with moss and mud. It has low nutritional value. In March and April, Himalayan swiftlets come here for reproduction. Due to the deterioration of their legs, they can't perch on branches. They either fly to look for food or rest in the nest. As a skilled hunter in the sky, the Himalayan swiftlet has a very sharp sight. But in the dark cave, a good vision is futile. In the darkness, how can the Himalayan swiftlet not hit other birds or obstacles, but find exactly where its nest is? The secret lies in its short beak and ears. In the well-lit entrance, it usually stays quiet. Once in the zone where light is weak, its calls become sharper, and it flies slowly. Reaching deep in the cave, in complete darkness, the swiftlet starts to make high-pitched continuous calls. By chirping and sending out signals and receiving information in the echoes, it can assess the structure of the cave and the location of its nest. The Himalayan swiftlet has a special acoustic positioning system similar to the ultrasonic positioning capability of bats. In spring, Tens of thousands of Himalayan swiftlets fly from the coasts to live across the Shenanjia area in a dozen of caves on the precipices. In about half a year, they breed and care for their offspring. Before migrating south at the end of September. Year after year, even after millennia, they always keep the promise with Shenanjia.